What franchise was milked is being milked too much, probably been said already but Spongebob, Steven Hillenburg wanted no spin-offs, and did his best to steer the ship of his creation in his later years. Now there's two spin-offs, both are bad and Nickelodeon has no plans on stopping, with no creator to tell them no. Sharknado, it was funny the first time, but I was horrified to learn they made six. Highlight of the whole series was in 3 or 4 when heavily pregnant Tara Reid was eaten by a shark in space. The offending shark crash landed on Earth. Everyone was like oh Tara's dead then Tara Reid cuts a hole in the side of the shark and pushes her newborn baby she'd birthed inside the shark out of the hole. There are meaningful life events I have very hazy recollection of yet I remember this clear as yesterday. I think in one of the later movies the kid born there makes a drawing of a shark and titles it daddy and I could not effing stop laughing. I guess these movies are my guilty pleasure. I've actually seen all of them I'll never get any of those brain cells back. Did you know that Total Drama Island has a baby spin-off? Ok campers. I have just been informed by an anonymous source that someone is milking this franchise. Not cool. Dudes. Why? Who is watching that? Who knows? The baby spin-off shows are weird. And there's a lot more of them than you might think. Just a sign that shows are running low on ideas to me. Want something to binge? The Land Before Times has 14 movies. Huh. Till that George Lucas and Steven Spielberg executive produced. Only. The first one. And on Bluth also has nothing to do with the other movies. The original was a masterpiece of animation. The other are kids movie. Jenny Nicholson did. And then did a video about it. I love everything about her long winded. Overly detailed investigations into anything. My fave is when she reads bad books and gives a rundown. I can't bring myself to watch them after knowing the ducky actress was murdered by her dad. The voice. Not on my team. They had like 40 seasons now and not one successful winner. Dude, that's because I clicked through all 20 season winners and every single one won a recording contract with Universal. Right? Like 5 have actually released records and only one was semi successful on country music charts. Nearly every single American Idol winner has won two albums even if they didn't do well. It's a competition for 100k and they don't give a single shift you release a damn thing after. Nickelodeon needs to leave the fairly odd prince alone. Wait, that's still going on? I remember watching that when I was 10 euro, and that was 15 years ago. Yep, they're doing a live action one now think at least the voice of Cosmo is the same but not sure about anything else. The movies had Drake Bellas to me but I don't suspect he'll be returning due to the most recent development. I dropped it for good pretty much after that dog came, which they later removed the show. Now they got this new girl Chloe who just like the dog didn't make the show better or no. I was done with poof. And then the movies and now live action show. Ugh just leave them be. That show is still a thing. 90 day fee and K. 90 day fee and K the other way. 90 day fee and K before the 90 days. 90 day fee and K happily ever after. 90 day fee and K what now? 90 day fee and K pillow talk. 90 day fee and K just landed. 90 day fee and K self quarantined. 90 day fee and K B90 strikes back. 90 day fee and K happily ever after strikes back. 90 day fee and K 90 days bears all. 90 day fee and K the other way strikes back. 90 day fee and K love games. 90 day fee and K the single life. 90 day journeys. 90 day diaries. Darcy and Stacy. Spin off. The family Chantel. Spin off. Half of these could be fake and I wouldn't be surprised. Sadly it's not. I once heard a promo refer to it as the 90 day universe. Universe. The NDU could use a Thanos snap. I don't have any awards. When I realized I was spending 6 hours a week keeping up with all of the 90 day combined with the fact that my husband was getting into it. I knew I had to quit cold turkey. I had to quit watching with my fiance because I realized I would instinctually drink whiskey until I thought the show was good. That being said, Paula, you will always have my drunken heart, never change, baby. The kissing booth, okay so I had no idea what this was so I googled a bit, and it's just so funny the first wiki page that google shows me is that guy, Telezak Perez, the 25th of December 1991, is an upcoming star in the Hollywood industry, in the summer of 2020, skyrocketed to stardom with his starring role as Marco in the Netflix movie The Kissing Booth 2, and I don't think I've ever seen a wiki page so blatantly written by his own agent Mayo. 
the Hollywood industry, hurry up, we need to produce six more Hollywoods by our deadline, throw in more broken dreams, coke, desperation, inflated egos, and sexual harassment and get the production line moving, don't worry, the next one is the last one, and it will be just as bad as the other two, and I will still watch it, are you my wife, those movies are garbage, yet she loves them. As a 33 year old man who has seen both movies because of my wife and her nieces, this is 100% true and I ain't even mad. Remember Ice Age? Good god do I ever. The first one was a classic, after that, the second one is a guilty pleasure of mine. The rest can go jump off a bridge though. Ted Bundy, not a franchise per se but every time I see a new movie coming out with some former teen heartthrob playing him I want to hurl. I like the Zac Efron one. He really nailed it, however it pisses me off that they don't talk about the more gruesome aspects of his murders, necrophilia and cannibalism. They should tell the whole story or not at all. I also like the documentary where the real Liz talked about her experiences. I loved the Netflix documentary where they spoke to a woman who went to camp with him and she was just like oh Ted, yeah he was a refined idiot, a nice change from the almost worshipping fascinated tone other people speak about him with. Cardation Jenner anything. The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, and multiple spin-offs, why so many shows about people trying to hook up, that's a Saturday night, that franchise is older than some of the people in this thread. First series debuted in March, 2002, I was finishing up grade 12, that and Survivor had most of my classmates hooked, but I could never get into reality shows, WWE Tough Enough, 2004, was the only one that interested me enough to watch sometimes. The Real Housewives of Orange County The Real Housewives of New York City The Real Housewives of Atlanta The Real Housewives of New Jersey The Real Housewives of DC The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills The Real Housewives of Miami The Real Housewives of Potomac The Real Housewives of Dallas The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City The Real Housewives of Melbourne The Real Housewives of Sydney The Real Housewives of Vancouver The Real Housewives of Toronto Lev Ray's Housewives The Real Housewives of Athens Fellas Ajek Luxus Kivitalban The Real Housewives Housewives Dean Arpoli The Real Housewives of Nairobi The Real Housewives of Auckland The Real Housewives of Johannesburg The Real Housewives of Durban The Real Housewives of Cheshire The Real Housewives of Jersey The Real Housewives of Mars The Real Housewives of Uranus Yawn. Tell me when they do The Real Housewives of Naboo The Real Housewives of Armicron Persevii Why does the largest housewife not simply eat the others? Terminator I can respect the third one in Salvation while bad, had a good premise, but Genesis was doing a 1080 over the shark, and then they followed it up with Dark Fate, a franchise almost 40 years old and Arnold isn't damn near all of them. The only thing I can say about that is that at least they didn't go the de-aging route, and after all that time, they still haven't shown how the war ends. One thing I did like is that they did do the de-aging while keeping old man Oni separate. I respect Salvation for showing us the future war and not being a time travel story. Kardashians. I thought they were the ones milking. Yes but also companies keep contracting them. Hulu for example. Grey's Anatomy. I watched the first 7 seasons. After that I felt like I saw all I needed to see to get it. Yeah there was a certain point. The plane crash I think. Chronology escapes me. When I said to myself. This many catastrophes don't happen to the same person people, and I kind of fizzled out on it. Is that show still running? Oh h yeah. 17 seasons deep, the lead actress has been very candid about how much she likes the paycheck. It'll run till it's unprofitable. Yeah my brother convinced my dad and I to watch it. We got all the way through season 12 until we were like eff it. This show is a. I'm forcing myself to watch it. Just Jesus if all your original main characters are dead or gone. Just quit the effing show already. On a side note I really effing enjoyed Private Practice, the spin-off with Addison, throughout its whole run. Yeah it definitely weakened in the 6th season due to some characters not returning but overall it was a really good show that had better arcs, more suspenseful storylines a moment instead of the non-stop show though this hospital is cursed with everyone dying of either a plane crash, shooter, bomb, flood giant car wreck it had one or two major incidents instead as far as i remember this is something that has been bothering me for years the progressive commercials with flow wtf are they still doing making these 
Some sociologists found that the literal pain response of advertising cringe sticks in our memory better than commercials that are purely informative, and are easier to make than commercials that are actually enjoyable. Basically any insurance ad, I'm getting really annoyed by the barrage of Liberty Mutual ads, especially the emu and Doug ones. Law order, law order, criminal intent, law order, special victims unit, law order, trial by jury, law order, Los Angeles, law order true crime, law order, organized crime. I'm starting to think the 2001 SNL skit law order, parking violations unit wasn't a skit so much as a trial balloon. The Chicago, Med, Fire ETC are also linked to these. In one episode MSO Fire on Fire they rang the SVU team. Law, totally agree, but SVU will forever be one of my favorite shows. I like the badass lead, and the show is so good. The acting is well done, and the plots are plausible. The despicable me minions that was milked like hell since 2010. I think it's still being pumped out but those yellow tic tacs curdled years ago. Every movie after the first is a minions movie with side characters. And it's super sad, because the first one was really good and a great look into Gru's development. I actually loved the second one. It really says a lot about the oversaturation of minions in memes and marketing that it feels like an incredibly milked dry franchise when it has only had 3 films and a spin-off. Not that that is a small amount of films, but it feels like there have been 20 of them lol. I actually think the core films get funnier each one. First movie, Global Threat, Steel Moon. Second film, City Threat, Destroy City. Third film, Destroy Hollywood The Neighborhood. It's like the Gru meme. The Minions movies are stupidish with some good jokes. Kids are the audience not us for those. FIFA. Don't play it but friends who do tell me nothing changes. They're not going to stop that golden goose though. Every sports game ever too. I know why they do it. But it just seems crazy they still have fans who buy it every year. Everyone. Understandably. Wants to play with accurate rosters. But you have to pay $60 to keep getting the active rosters. It's a total scam and not worth it, but there is a reason. 13 reasons why, 13 seasons why, I don't know. The progression from the aftermath of a girl suicide to a mentally ill person talking to the ghosts of two artists during a fake school shooting felt extremely natural. Spongebob, Spongebob seasons 1-3 and all the meme templates it spawned will forever be something I will cherish. Wish it ended after the original movie. The second movie was terrible and they just came out with the Patrick Star show. I'm a massive fan of Spongebob still. But I haven't watched a new episode in years and never will. I think that Steven Hillenburg is rolling over in his grave over how the show and movie franchises is now. I'm also a massive Spongebob fan but I'll usually only watch the first few seasons. Ben 10 has been massacred man. The original series will always be the best. Also Baruto is not very good, if not bad tbh, I had no idea this was still going on, I love the original series, this image basically summarizes what has happened to this show, I fing loved OG Ben 10 when I was a kid, that, Danny Phantom, and Adler are the absolute goats of my childhood, I remember Alien Force being pretty solid too but I never finished it, I came here to say Ben 10 got destroyed. It was good until Ultimate Alien and then after was ruined. The Purge. I will say the cowboy screaming it's the forever purge in the new trailer makes me cackle so that's something that almost made me want to watch the movies. Grand Theft Auto V. It's been almost 7 years and we still haven't gotten a new game yet. Online is the cash cow for our games. GTA 5 has been on 3 playstations. Meanwhile the PS2 had 3 GTAs. I don't enjoy this fun fact. Imagine telling someone in 2013 that both Skyrim and GTA 5 sequels wouldn't even have announced release dates 8 years later. I'd be so effing depressed as someone time traveled and told me that. Remember when they said they'd also include stocks in multiplayer at one point so people could invest in fake brands in game and then impact them by blowing up cars robbing those banks stores etc and making losing money that way? Yep I think they may have not followed through with that because I guarantee someone would find an exploit and make our remove or patch the add-on. Almost 8, actually, September 2013 I Ike. Expect Red Dead 3 in 2040. The Walking Dead. That show has run its course. Let it die already. Um but isn't the point that they can't die? 
mathematically they have to run out of zombies eventually. Is it still running WTF? I stopped after 4-5, literally the same each season. Runs into group, group ends up being bad, they kill someone, they fight said group, zombies come in right after, run to new location, run into another group, repeat, and limited ammo. The Saw series, we don't need 15 more hyper and realistic torture techniques and a drawn out plot that makes no sense at this point, please stop. COD, I'm waiting for COD. Early warfare where the campaign is you murdering hapless Neanderthals with throwing spears, and the multiplayer is a mess of rage nerds running through a historical torch lit cave networks quickscoping each other with lengths of sharpened wood. Primitive warfare. I wonder if they'll ever be like Guitar Hero, realize there's too many of their games out there, and pull the plug. Have you ever tried Clone Hero? The existence of that game kinda nullifies any sort of comeback for GH or Rock Band anyway. Although some new peripherals would be much appreciated, it's absolutely free and the library of songs is endless if anyone reading this interested. I don't think it was a matter of too many games. There's honestly only so much you can do with 6 buttons and a strum bar. Anything after that we mid as well move on to Rocksmith and just play the actual instrument. The hangover was perfect, shouldn't have milked it at all. The Simpsons is clawing at its life support machine begging to be put out of its misery. Stop, stop, they are already dead. They'll never stop the Simpsons, have no fears. We've got stories for years. The Simpsons is one of my all time favorite shows, yet I've seen less than half of its episodes. I mean, they have got to be a few people retiring away from not being able to continue, right? The voice actors are paid a truckload and the writers are constantly swapped out. Surprised I had to scroll down this far. It's been, what, 30 plus years? The Simpsons movie, which is much better than it should be, would have been a great way to end the franchise. Not like they won't make more money than God just on syndication. Now voice actors are passing away and beloved characters like Apu are too controversial for modern TV. I don't know anyone who has watched new episodes in last 10 plus years. High School Musical, The Musical The Series, The Holiday Special, The Walking Dead, Fear The Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, World Beyond, The Walking Dead Origins, 3 confirmed Walking Dead movies, The Walking Dead, Red Machete, The Walking Dead, Torn Apart, The Walking Dead, The Oath, Carol and Daryl Spin-Off, Title Bar, Fear The Walking Dead, Flight 462, Game Time, The Walking Dead, Road to Survival, The Walking Dead, Season 1, The Walking Dead, Season 2, The Walking Dead, Mitchin, The Walking Dead, A New Frontier, The Walking Dead, The Final Season, The Waking Dead, Survival Instinct, The Walking Dead, Overkills The Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, Saints Sinners, The Walking Dead, Onslaught, The Walking Dead, Dead Reckoning, the Walking Dead, Assault, The Walking Dead, Road to Survival, The Walking Dead, No Man's Land, The Walking Dead, Left Behind, Honorable Mentions The Talking Dead, All the Comics I Guess, I Bet I'm Missing Stuff Too Honestly, Naruto, OG Anime and Shippuden have tons of filler just to kept going the anime in a weekly format, after Naruto ended they launched Baruto where the main antagonist, at least at the beginning, are aliens, and that's too much. I actually looked up how much filler there was in Shippuden. 43%. 43%. That's almost 220 episodes of nothing. Fast and Furious. Do we really need a dozen almost a dozen movies? Ask me again after F12. Gravitational Assist Maneuver. F13 The Race to Alpha Centauri. Fast 10 Your Seatbelts. They have to make one where they drive so fast that they end up time traveling to the past. And then they race with old Timmy cars. Fast and Furious. Blast from the past. Or maybe just Past and Furious. Past and Furious. Tokyo Rift. Not really a particular franchise but Disney is doing way too many live action remakes of their classics. Also, the Toy Story franchise. Disney is doing way too many live action remakes of their classics. But they are like money printing presses. I agree that they suck. But I can't say I blame Disney for generating a lazy billion dollars. Toy Story isn't being nearly as milked as other franchises. Pixar maintained its high standard of quality in all four movies. Even though Toy Story 3 would have been a good ending point and Toy Story 4 was very different. 
It was still a good movie, it was an epilogue, it's not necessarily the main story but it was a nice little end to Woody's story. I read an article recently arguing for remaking Atlantis as live action, and I wholeheartedly agree that it would work. Jungle Book wasn't bad, the rest are, emo, terrible. So I agree about live action being way overdone, emo the original Atlantis is severely underrated, unlike the second one. Hot garbage. However, a live action would absolutely kick A if done correctly. Major plus if Danny DeVito plays Noel, or a live action treasure planet. One can dream. Fast and Furious. In the first movie they were stealing VCR players. In the eighth movie they prevent World War 3 by going to Russia and stopping nuclear warheads from destroying America. Those things are still overly expensive today. Transformers. You better mean the movie franchise. Otherwise I will. Respectfully disagree with your opinion on a franchise I love. Not a franchise but a person. Conor McGregor. Now that he's solved in terms of MMA and no longer looks like a world beater, not to mention an injury that guarantees he'll never be the same again. The UFC is pretty much only going to use him for his name ID and sell as many PPVs as possible until his obnoxious fan club realizes they've hitched their wagon to a perennial loser and insufferable prick. He'll be squeezed for every last drop of his vitality by the UFC but he'll still make tons of money to get beaten to pulp by hungrier, more focused fighters. One can only hope he's invested some wisely though, because once the rubes realize he's washed up, those million by PPV Zaganizo, and good riddance, he's an awful human being, F him. The best description of Connor's late career I ever came across was in some YouTube comment section, I think. He's lost what made him great, poverty, he's too rich to be a good fighter anymore, he mails it in. As much as I love the John Wick series I think it'll probably get milk just because people love it, hopefully not, but time will tell.